analytics and business intelligence means many things to many people. What, what does it mean for you and, and your team in ANZ? For us, analytics um, and business intelligence is effectively around driving data-driven insights and conversations. And we've been doing that for, you know, for a number of years now across our retail distribution and product networks. And so it's very much around that insight-based, data-driven conversations, both at a customer level and for our staff. And, uh, what were the, some of the challenges that you encountered you know, when your team came to fruition and when you, know, when you set onto the scene and mission? Yeah, it was interesting, you know, you mentioned around people producing things and you know, consumption. Um, when I reflect back a couple of years, probably three or four years ago, our team was very much around a report building machine factory, not too dissimilar to what Katrina Noble spoke about in relation to McDonald's. So we were producing heaps and heaps of reports and we were measuring our value based on how many reports we were generating on time and accurately. That was okay, but the only thing that we weren't looking at is consumption and value. Were those reports being used? Were they valuable? And so, you know, that was, for me, um, something that sort of was quite important in terms of measuring, measuring a function. And at that stage, you know, reached out to some of the, the senior executives within retail and I recall a conversation with the GM of our branch network and I said to him, look, you know, are we adding value to your, to your business? And he, he invited me to his side of the desk. He opened up the, um, one of our many reporting sites and he said, where do I look? So there were hundreds and hundreds of reports and most of them were static and he just did not have the bandwidth to be able to find out where to go to find the answer. So that was quite pivotal and we knew that we had to change. How did you change? I mean, change in banking is, uh, is not easy. Change in banking is not easy. Um, I think one of the pivotal moments, so we realised that we did need to change and one of the, the pivotal moments came, funnily enough, at a Christmas party three years ago. Um, and we did think that our boss was um, pulling our leg because it was after a few drinks and he came up to us and said, the MD of retail distribution and the MD of products have come to me and they want a view of sales performance across all of our products, product lines and across all of our channels. And they want that in an interactive dashboard and they want that early in the new year. <laughs> so, um, you know, we have hundreds of data feeds, um, infrastructure that's not that great. Um, so that was something that was not impossible. Um, at that stage, we knew that there were some conversations happening in the organisation with Click, and uh, we reached out and we said, look, we've got this challenge. We need to bring a whole heap of information together, put it together in an interactive way in a single dashboard. Um, can you guys help us? And the results were quite significant. Um, we produced that dashboard within the four weeks that we had. We sat back with the MDs and we showed them the interactive nature of the dashboards and they were blown away. Um, we showed them a working prototype. Once we had the executive support, it did make it a little bit easier. Uh, technology, and I'm not um, the only one here that would profess this, that technology were difficult to uh, convince um, in relation to adopting and Im implementing the tool into the organisation. Architectural decisioning was, was challenging. Um, there was a lot of questions about, is this the tool that we have to use for BI? So we tried to diffuse that a little bit by saying, well, this is not the only tool that you have to use for BI, but for this specific use case, it is a strong one. And the business um, is supportive. The business is supportive from a financial perspective and we, we need to do things differently. So we influenced the, the technology arm um, and convinced them to um, initially support us in a proof of concept with a smaller pilot rollout um, because the broader initial approval was going to prove even more difficult. So we said, well, let's, let's scale it back. Let's give us approval for 125 users um, contained 
um, and we will manage, we'll manage all of the change, we'll manage all of the implications. And so we were able to get the approval for that, to prove the value. Nice one. And where'd you go from 125? What sort of uh, adoption did you get and how? Yeah, so the adoption was very strong um, from our front line and very much they embedded it into their daily practices. So it was basically used for conversations around, well, your branch is doing this, um, you know, the CBD branch is um, doing a lot more um, strongly in terms of performance. What's the difference? Why is it the case? Um, so it was very much used for coaching conversations. And very quickly, those 125, and that was aimed at just, um, district managers and general managers, and they were demanding and they were saying, well, when can I get this into the hands of my staff? So we are now at 3,000 plus um, licenses and users of Click across the organisation. So the entire retail distribution network and our product teams have got that. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been a, a significant success story. But that's a large uplift, 120 to 3,000. I mean, how did you manage that change? I mean, people, some people might have liked those reports, some people might, might have been a bit afraid of the new. Yeah, I think the key was embedding it into the practices. Um, the district managers, the GMs, they were all using that dashboard for the conversations. We also concurrently turned off close to 200 odd historical legacy reports, so we no longer gave them access to it. So the, it was the single source of truth and it was where the conversations were happening. So That'll always help. <laughs> well, it, it, it helps and it unfortunately doesn't happen always, right, in terms of system implementations and implementations of new tools come, but then the legacy system remains. And we've got that even in the bank where you keep the two running, people are people that embrace change quickly enough and therefore they'll continue to use the old one. So we were able to prove the value and then we turned off the old and through the conversations being ha happening around the dashboards, it really did help us in terms of the change management. With that many people, you're going to get a lot of change, a lot of evolution. How did you not become a bottleneck yourselves? Yeah, we weren't and we're not uh, a big team in terms of the BI space. And so we recognised that we didn't want to be the bottleneck in relation to demand. We have got an offshore operation in China, um, which we armed up to help with the development. More recently, we've also developed practices around self-service, so Click, with some knowledge, um, is able to be used by a number of our dispersed analytic teams. Um, so they do a lot of the, the prototyping and the development of the initial dashboards, which then gets sent across to our Chengdu arm to productionise into, um, into the sort of sustainable solution. What's next, and what are some of the more advanced or current thinking for your group? Yeah, so our group is, I guess, transitioning and our focus has been a lot more around our strategic priority, which is next best conversations. And we're now using Click and also the dashboards to, to drive some of those conversations in the front line. Um, you know, a good example is, you know, if you used to booked a, a, an airfare using your credit card, we know that your behaviours and your spend behaviours are going to be different in coming months. That information is very powerful for the way in which we produce our leads and offers and give them to our front line. So we have done that in terms of incorporated that information in terms of our modelling. We've put that into the dashboard so that they know that they've got a, a higher propensity to take up in terms of the conversations that they're having. And we are able to monitor it effectively through the use of Click. As a result of the change of focus and as a result of being a bit more targeted in relation to our selection criteria, we're achieving about 136% compared to prior year in relation to our conversion of our leads. And if you're sitting here in the audience and you were starting this journey again, what, what, would, what would you say would be those success factors or why this worked for you? I think the three that come to mind for me is, you know, we, we did have that executive buy-in right at the start. And I think that was important in terms of influencing the organisation. We had the, the users, I guess in terms of embedding it into daily practices, that was achieved very early on in the piece as well. So it was embedded into the weekly rituals, the stand-ups, the way in which the front line was being managed. And then for me, the last would probably be the fact that we didn't 
rest after we released the first lot of dashboards, we, we incorporated an, an agile mindset in terms of the fact that we need to keep evolving this. We need to think about things like user experience. We need to uh, look at the different personas of the people um, that are using it and adjust it accordingly to what they want to see. How has the tool evolved the conversation between management and the front line? Because the front line is at the, at the customer end yeah. and as we've heard the last day and a half, being able to work from the customer back is very powerful but at some point what the front line is saying and the management believe there's going to be a clash. How does that look? Yeah, I think it's improved it significantly because, you know, Stu mentioned before that a lot of the, the historical reports were, I wouldn't say manipulated, but they were all sort of had different versions of the truth. Um, and now the conversations are based on a single set of information. Um, and the conversations are very much driven, even at a coaching or customer level, around what is this telling us. Um, so the customer conversations, as I mentioned, around leads and offers, it is helping because of the fact that it's got information. So, for example, this dashboard that's behind me um, has got information around, well, what are the leads that we're going to have to action before the end of this week? How many have we done? What's our conversion? What's our success rates? Um, and that has already been pre-selected based on the, what's, important to the business. what's important to the business and what's important to the customer based on things that they have recently done. So the actions that they've made through their transactions gives us information that says, okay, you're going to want potentially this product. It's not a cold conversation. It's not a, you know, welcome. What do you need? Good question there is, has the broader organisation adopted, adopted this tool or just the retail bank? Uh, commercial um, has also started embracing this tool. We, we're working through a fairly large implementation for them, so the commercial side of the business. Institutional um, bank has got a, a fairly large instance of it as well. Um, we were one of the first to, to get, I guess, off the ground, but now it's, uh, I think across the organisation, we're probably about 5,000 odd licences for Click. Um, so it is, it is growing in terms of the adoption across the organisation. Just a broader question, how uh, data savvy would you say ANZ is now compared to say two years ago? Because, uh, and the reason I ask that question is that um, uh, through ABNF we've been having data conversations with banking in a bit, for about five years, mm -hmm. but I know for a fact that most of the banks haven't really been using data very effectively until about three years ago, which yeah. means understanding how to use data and be data savvy is is only a relatively new phenomenon. Is that the case at ANZ? Yeah, I think that's, that's a fair comment in relation to... We've had reporting for a long time, so in terms of information that's there in the hands of decision makers, in the hands of frontline. But I think it's becoming more... Um, it's, it's being lifted to a higher level now in terms of the, the way in which the people are interacting and making decisions out of that. Um, it's the ability to drill down and understand what's going on a little bit more clearly. Um, it's being conscious of the fact that there's a lot of information that's there um, in order to think about the decisions. Um, so I think significantly improved in relation to the data savviness. Unless there's any more questions from the floor, I think it's time to uh, thank Sidhu and Stuart for giving us this insight into what is a really important reform for how data is used within an organisation, which I know for many of you is actually a really significant challenge. Put your hands together, please, for our speakers. Thank you. Thank you.